Hello everyone and welcome to a very special uh, episode of Sug Talks. Once again, I can confirm you aren't listening to the wrong podcast by mistake as I will be your guest host for this episode. I'm Jaron Main and you may already know me from my own podcast, Sap Chat. Now, unusually, I've been invited back by the user group to discuss what they've been up to in the past year and their upcoming priorities for the next 12 months. One of reflection, I think. So please make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. It really does make a difference if you click on those likes and uh, subscribe uh, subscriptions. So today I'm joined by Craig Dale, Chief Executive of UKI SUG and the usual host of this podcast. So I'm very much sat in his chair today. And Paul Cooper, Chair of UKI SUG, who needs no introduction at all. Now, gentlemen, I wonder if you can help me. Um, at the uh, UKI Connect conference back in uh, November last year, I, I was sat in a circle and I saw you two gentlemen talking to each other before the keynote started off. And you were sat there, stood there talking. You were obviously prepping yourself. And I, I had this idea and I looked at myself and I thought, do you know what? If those two gentlemen were biscuits, what biscuit would they be? Are you able to help me? Oh, interesting one, that, Jaron. And it's yeah. weird to be on this side of the uh, the screen, actually. But I think I've got to let Paul go uh, first on this one. Well, I have to say, my normal answer is it's a wagon wheel. But at that moment in time, it's probably something um, uh, uh, that's going to melt in your fingers or, or break or something like that, because it's all very tense. So... Um, I'm struggling for an example at the moment, but uh, maybe a sort of a Maryland cookie because there's, you know, there's crumbs there, there's all the rest of it, and you know, it might go wrong, it might go well. Definitely, it did go well, but you know, there's that moment in those uh, 15 minutes before you go on stage where the heart races and so on. So yeah, something something that could crumble but could be really good as well. Okay, and Craig. I think I will go for a wagon wheel, actually, and the the jam the jam version. You know, you, you you're looking at the outside and 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 you see this kind of crusty biscuit or whatever, and but there is a bit of sweetness in the middle, really, if you dig deep enough. <laughs> I think I think that's where I'll go. Well, interestingly enough, I was sat there and I was I was doodling away, and I I, I thought Paul would be a hobnob, actually, because there, there was this kind of rather refined exterior but it just kind of gets the job done and and craig i thought you're more like a, a jammy dodger bit of a cheeky chappy do you know what i mean in the biscuit world <laughs> and and, ah. and for any listeners who, who just joined this uh, and fast forwarded to this part of the podcast um you haven't joined uh, biscuit monthly podcast this is the uh, sub talks podcast so uh, enough enough of the hilarity and getting back to today's main topic of conversation I thought we'd start off with what you were most proud of in terms of the UKI SUG achievements in, in 2022. I think if we look back on 2022, uh, you know, one of the big things we did was, was take our strategic work that, that we did in 21 and really shared our vision to you know, drive success for the SAP community. Uh, and look at how we can ma manifest that with, through the unrivaled resources education advocacy that we we deliver to to the sap community and you know throughout 2022 we look to bring that that vision to life and you know some of the areas what we've done this was you know again uh helping our members uh upskill uh with uh the the work we did uh with sap on on learning hub and the power of the community to allow our members to to access a huge discount on on learning hub uh the, the work that we we started uh last year on on the academy which uh, i'm sure we'll come to later on uh, and you know the white papers we produced with sustainability you know that mm. the, the whole uh, kind of ice initiative that we have uh, sustainability research white paper we, we've looked at transformation in the public sector and certifications again back to that skills piece and uh, you know helping our members drive success and you know we started to adapt our SIGs as well, uh, you know, one looking at uh, S4 because predominantly 
we focused on the journey to S4. And, you know, that's still mm. very, you know, key to what we're doing because the, the vast majority of our members are still on that journey. Yeah. Uh, but also we've started looking at now and we, we'll be launching soon is what can we do for the customers that have already gone to S4? You know, how can we help them to the future as well now they're there uh, and make sure that they're not forgotten? Brilliant. Thank you. So what do you think, though, we, we, you've just touched on that, but what do you think are the biggest challenges facing your members at the moment and, and how is the user group looking to, to support them? I think there's a there's a few dimensions to that at the moment from a, a membership perspective um, and, and our our community. I think S4 is clearly still very big part of what people are up to at the moment. You know, whilst year on year we're seeing an increase in the number of people that have are, are making the move or have made the move, the move, there's still a lot of people that are on the cusp of getting their projects over the line and starting the you know the graft of, of getting there. So I think that's still a big challenge out there. And we've got a significant proportion of users who are now on S4, whether that be, you know, from Greenfield's new customers that we've 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 got in, in the, the membership, or people that have gone through an upgrade path. And I think for those it's about we've we've made the journey. SAP, you know, sold us the dream. We've we've got to the promised land of S4. Mm. How do we now get the best from that investment? How do we now drive the business forward and, you know, all the disruption in supply chains and all the things that have happened from COVID? How do we take that learning and, and, and you know, develop our SAP platform forward? Do we need to use BTP and, you know, or business technology platform? Sorry, let me avoid the acronyms. Um, and, you know, how do we drive our SAP piece forward now? So there's kind of those two dimensions now for S4, for, for us as a user group. So increasingly, we're not just about helping people get over the line of an S4 journey. Mm. We're now starting to shift and talk about what do you do once you've got there. So we're, we're increasing that side of the equation as well to reflect, you know, there's a critical mass of users made that journey. So for us, that, that's important. I think the other thing that, you know, came out a little bit in terms of some of the things Craig was talking about, skills and recruitment are very, very challenging. Mm. There are not huge numbers of candidates out there when you advertise a role. And there's actually, there's, you know, there are some demographics as well, meaning there are perhaps more roles in this space. And perhaps that, you know, the world of SAP has not been seen as, as glamorous as some of the, the kind of startup technology areas that people perhaps would want to work in, whether that be in technical roles or, you know, kind of business facing role sales and marketing, you know, the, the glamour of the startup world versus the, the more traditional industries and so on. So I think we, we're seeing that now from a user group perspective over the last few years, it is an area that we have, you know, endeavoured to support the, the membership with some of our white papers, skills, white papers, talking, uh, you know, we've done podcasts, talking about recruitment, talking about how you develop people. Um, uh, and that's clearly is a sweet spot for us. And, and I think later on, we'll, we'll talk on a little bit more about the Skills Academy that we announced last year. And, you know, all of those things are really important to our membership and really important as a user group that we support our community driving forward. Thanks, Paul. So you, um, the big, big announcement um, last year, big initiative, the ICE initiative, and uh, not wishing to uh, dwell on acronyms too much, but stood for investment, community, and environment. And that was something um, you, you went into a lot of detail about. How's that been going, and, and what are your plans on that for this year? Uh, thanks, Joan. And, you know, what, one of the key things for us in 2022 and, and moving forward into this year was uh, sustainability. Uh, which is a big part of our ICE initiative. Uh, and, you know, it, it's gone from strength to strength. We, we created a sustainability special interest group. Uh, we've already held online sessions and face-to-face -face meetings at the conference. You know, we had a, 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 a connect. We, we had a stream running on our stand looking at 
that uh, kind of community and environment and, and well-being uh, mm. piece through, throughout the event as well. We've got more sessions planned this year. Uh, and we kind of began our own journey uh, to net zero uh, as well last year by, you know, measuring our carbon emissions uh, to, to enable us to look at, OK, how can we reduce uh, and remove uh, th those emissions in the coming years on, on our own journey to net zero. The, the well-being side of things, wellness, we, we, we continue uh, to, to work with our uh, mental health partner, Thrive, in, in that area. And I know you know Simon uh, quite well, Geron. I do, and, indeed. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's we, we've had so much good feedback on that. And, you know, we want to continue in that area to help people. You know, people are the heart of our community. I know that sounds like, you know, a cliche, but, you know, it, it's it's giving back to them. You know, we're not just SAP. We're here to help and support the community in, in many different ways. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, been been moving along rather nicely. Uh, you know, we, we released the paper on, on sustainability, as I mentioned earlier. And, and as part of that community initiative and reinvestment, uh, we've also got the um, our UK ISOC Academy, which has been mentioned a couple of times already, uh, you know, we, which we're looking to launch in the second half of this year, focusing on uh, S4 Skills Academy. Brilliant. And the other thing that I'd add, Craig, is, you know, we did that piece of work in, feels like a long time ago now, but, you know, during the COVID era, when we looked at our strategy and, and what we were as a user group, mm. and there was a word that came out of that that we haven't really used much up until then. And it does sum it up, and that is that community word. And, yeah. you know, we hadn't really used that much in the context of the user group. And it is something that we are developing and, and talking about more and I think that underpins you know some of what Craig was talking about in terms of kind of the you know the community part the environment part that you know we're not just about driving the use of SAP we're about supporting our membership and our our wider you know ecosystem community and so you know that well-being piece is really important now if you'd asked us three, four years ago, would we be doing something like that as a user group? That that wouldn't be such a, a large part of where we thought we would be in 2023 and, and beyond. So I think that that community word is absolutely key to us now and how we grow that and develop that and not just through that SAP lens, through what we can do from an environment perspective, what we can do to, to develop our members' skills and so on. So think that for me is is where really where you know we're, we're pushing really hard and that really did come over i think at the last connect conference it really did feel like a community event as much as uh, an sap user group event um now one of the things that came out loud and clear i think one of the stats i remember was like 92 percent from your your survey and forgive me if i've got the stats slightly wrong but something like 92 percent of your survey had said we want more help um you know, for environment, sustainability, ESG type initiatives. And, you know, they're looking at SAP to, to, to help those organisations. Any organisation I speak to at the moment are asking that. It's, it's front and centre. Um, so, you know, how, how, how is that, uh, how, how is the support that you're trying to offer to those, those members? How, how are you going about that? So as Craig mentioned, we've, we've started that community. Mm -hmm. So we've now got a, a special interest group, SIG chair, yep. um, and we'll start to develop that community. I think, you know, it's early stage. It always takes us a while to get these types of special interest groups rolling. So they started out with virtual events and they'll build from there with streams at the conference. We've been talking to SAP as well. And you know, there's, there's work going on with Sujin as well in terms of pushing SAP harder in terms of how we get to data, how we measure things. You know, SAP is at the core of many, many businesses and therefore is a great place to start in terms of measuring how you're doing and what you're doing so that you can develop your plans. I don't know what you'd add on to that, Craig. Yeah, I think that's right. And 
I think the relationship with SAP is quite important here. Uh, you know, you did touch on it, Jaron, and you mentioned it, Paul, as well, but from two angles for me. One is that it enable uh, in the tools that SAP can provide customers to support them on measuring and reducing on that journey to net zero, mm. but also as a... Uh, communicating what they're doing because I think they you know when I look at SAP when I looked at you know when we looked at our journey to net zero we looked at you know what is SAP doing because they're you know a, a quite far forward and are working with other customers who are really are forward on their journey to, to net zero and in the sustainability piece so that that key element there is from SAP to share what they're doing uh, so people can learn from that as well, but also from the tools and the solutions that they can provide customers to help them on their journey. Excellent. Thank you. So women in SAP was a, a massive focus for you last year. Are there plans to expand on this initiative in 2023? It's always uh, there's a slight irony of three men on the podcast talking about women in SAP. I know. But uh, let's 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 tread into that territory. Again, it's it's part of our community development that we need to grow and support that side of the community. Uh, you know, we've increased um, our emphasis on that, and we're me you know measuring ourselves mm -hmm. in terms of you know speakers at events, breakout sessions at conferences, and so on. So you know, behind the scenes, it, it's an area that you know we're testing ourselves on. But you're right, we we did start and launch a community um, at, the, at the 2021 conference. And that has grown over last year. They've had um, virtual events. They actually had a face-to-face. -face. There was a face-to-face -face event in um, July last year. All of these events are being very well subscribed. And there's a monthly event that I believe you've got to book well in advance to, to get, your, get your space on it. Right. So, you know, it's an area that as a user group, we're conscious that we're not as representative as we should be. Mm -hmm. We've not got that that balance of, 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 you know, in that diversity. And therefore, we're doing what we can to develop that, to support that community and ensure that in reality, over time, that should be less important because it should just be part of what we do. But at the moment, we need to push to make sure that people feel, you know, it is an inclusive community. It is helping develop that side of things. We can't afford not to have all the talent that we possibly can in the SAP world and in, 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 in the using commu user community. And therefore, we're working hard to support the Women in SAP initiative. We're getting great support from SAP and other technology partners that we've got in the ecosystem to drive that forward so it's you know it's clearly something that everyone recognizes in is important and we're doing our part to drive that that section of our community excellent thank you Paul. so more widely uh, what are the other uki so uh, objectives for the year I think if we if we look at uh, this year going forward, uh, continuing our our strategic work that that we talked about when we reflected on the achievements of of twenty twenty two, continuing to grow the community. Uh, one of the areas we've worked uh, on over the past few years is trust uh, with SAP mm. and building a trusted relationship. Uh, between SAP and their customers so we we've run a number of workshops bringing various customers together with SAP and different uh, if you like leaders within the SAP environment from different areas of the business to look at you know what builds trust what makes trust and coming out of that uh, there's a couple of uh, things that will be released in in uh, the next month or two one around how SAP has changed especially its governance model and how it works with customers on that work and we'll also be releasing uh, what we're calling our customer charter uh, which kind of provides advice to customers on the steps they can take to help that 
uh, relationship with SAP and also bolster that with the support of SAP that if the customer is going to make that step, then SAP will make the step as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and another area, and we've already touched on the, the journey to West Fork uh, as, a, as a big, big area and obviously what we're doing for customers on S4 as well. But another area is around line of business. And, you know, if you if you look at our membership uh, overarchingly, we're probably seen as a, a, an IT community. Yeah. Uh, and what we want to do is to, you know, bring in more line of business members. And, you know, we had a workshop uh, at the end of January, which we which included uh, our board, our team, uh, some volunteers, uh, SIG chairs, and also uh, SAP. So we had a number of people from different parts of SAP. And we sat down to look at, okay, what do we mean by line of business? What do we think line of business uh, people need? And then what can we provide? And then what do we need to provide that? So we're kind of working on the next stages of that at the moment to drive that. And, you know, we're seeing since then, we're seeing some great engagement with a number of teams from SAP, especially in the uh, CX area. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking to develop that as we go forward to, to really build uh, more line of business people into the, uh, into the community. Is there anything you'd like to add on top of that, Paul? I think for me, the line of business piece is important this year. Mm. Increasingly, that's the area that SAP are trying to, to target. So, you know, there's, both of us are trying to fish in that in that space. But, you know, as the world changes in terms of, you know, the, the, the cloud computing applications, there is a different role for IT and the business in terms of the decision making the implementation and the ease with which some products that you know you can deploy them like say yeah. concur and therefore it's really important to us that we're supporting you know the wider finance community in how to make decisions or support their technology partners sorry their technology um, employees or you know their, their line of business that are making decisions you know how can we help finance to do that how do we help the supply chain people to understand what they need to look at when they're making decisions about software and driving the use of that software. They're all great things that we do already in that technology focused piece. Now we just need to, you know, articulate and get that message right as to how we engage with the line of business people to help them in the, in the, in the SAP space. So I think for me, that's going to be really important for us this year. And the other thing that I'd say is continuing to drive to get people out of hibernation and get them into, you know, face to face events. Yep. You know, every time I go to one and you talk to people there, you know, there are still people that, oh, this is the first time I've been to a big event <laughs> yeah. um, and so on. And, and actually, you know, they say, I've, I've, I've so missed this now that I've come because you can get used to talking like we're doing now virtually. Totally. And yeah. it kind of just becomes what you expect as the norm and all of a sudden, Yep. You need to be dragged screaming and kicking to an event. So I think that, you know, again, helping our members get the most out of that face to face and, and come out of hibernation would be the other key message for me. Perfect. So another area I wanted to touch on, we, we, you mentioned it, it was mentioned briefly earlier in the, uh, the episode was uh, around education. You announced that UKI SUG Academy uh, at Connect 2022 and can you give me a bit of further insight on the plans around education for members and indeed the academy itself? Yeah, uh, obviously the ed education is quite wide ranging from from what we offer with, uh, with, within the user group. Uh, we, we have our special interest group meetings and our events to bring education on what's happening in the SAP world and bring insight to our members on potential tools and uh, solutions that they can use to really drive their success in the use of SAP. The resources Paul's touched on and I mentioned earlier in the white papers that we produce to, again to help customers make informed decisions when they're going forward and use the experience of, of other customers to make sure they can avoid pitfalls and uh, you know make the right decisions going forward and then of course there's that skills gap piece and you know we I think we we actually wrote the skills paper 
back at the end of 2020 now and it's still as relevant now as it was then and you know what we're looking at to help on that is uh is the uk isaac academy so the aim is that we we have a wide range in uk isaac academy and the first one we're starting with is our s4 academy and what we're focusing on on this is what technical training and technical skills do customers need on their journey to S4 HANA and what we did through last year we got a number of customers together who've made the journey uh, we're partnering with SA Systems and uh, an, an academic uh, Professor Amini who uh, has has put together, if you like, curricula before. And we started looking at, okay, what, what did they need? What were the, uh, if, if you like, the milestones on their journey? What were the key areas of their journey to S4? And what skills did they need at these times? Mm. So we, we've come up with uh, six specific modules within the S4 Academy. And what we're currently doing is uh, putting together the detail and looking at the actual content and who will deliver that content and, and how it will be delivered ready for uh, launch in, in the second half of this year. And, you know, you may reflect back and say, OK, well, why, why technical skills? Well, one of the things in our research when we spoke to a lot of our members is because a lot of, well, let, let's say, probably the majority of the SSP systems out there, uh, especially when you're looking in the on-premise world, are customised a lot to that customer. The actual business user training is different for every customer. You know, we spoke to a number of members and their training was different. So what we're going to be looking at there is more around train the trainer because organisations have their own internal training teams. Our first step on the business side of things will be to train the trainer. But hopefully, you know, uh, the aim is that we, we get the S4 Academy off the ground up and running uh, in the second half of this year. Uh, we'll run a pilot, I think. Uh, we, we talked about of our uh, board meeting in, in January about running a pilot pilot for our members through this year to learn from it to tweak it to to improve it uh and and then we'll we'll just move forward and uh continue to bring more uh to our members in in not in the way of skills i think we already have kind of btp lined up as the next area perhaps we will look at and uh, deliver that as we go forward i think the the other thing for me about the skills academy is you know i can stand up on stage at a conference and i can talk about you know, a particular topic and I can say to you know the gathered community come and give us some feedback or give it you know tell mm. us what you you know you want and invariably no one will accost you at the conference and mention that topic the great thing about the skills academy and clearly does demonstrate that we are you know doing something that is required was the number of people that came and spoke to me spoke to Craig Mm. Um, and spoke to you know some of the team that are supporting the you know the design of it and what I would say you know now is if you are a member of our community and hopefully you are if you're listening to this you know we're still taking feedback about how this can be delivered what is important to people this is a long-term investment by the board in the user group mm. um, and it's a long-term investment in terms of what we think we can do with it and how we can grow it it's not something that we're doing this year. This is a long, long piece of work for us and will develop and grow over time. So we're still happy to get feedback from people when they're participating, but also where we should be concentrating that resource as we grow this initiative. Yeah. And just, just on that point, uh, I was speaking at an SAP Rise event last week uh, down, down at uh, SAP headquarters, and one of our members was in the audience and uh, chatting over coffee, and you know she was asking me about the academy and and kind of also mentioned some things that would really work for her and her organisation mm. going forward. So again, we're feeding that in. So as Paul says, we're we're it's a, an evolving. Uh, kind of academy that, that we want to make sure it meets all of our members' needs. Well, it's great to hear that it's build, building momentum and uh, and it sounds like it's going to be a really, really valuable resource. Now, one of the things, I, I Paul, you mentioned about uh, in-person events, and I think 2022, 
uh, was a hugely successful Connect conference. Um, but I'm interested to know what was the feedback from that conference and, and any any sort of plans for this year that you can divulge ahead of the event? I think for me, the, the feedback was, was really good. Um, I have this strange scenario for me when I'm at the conference and all these people come and talk to me and they kind of know who I am, but I don't know who they are. So you're kind of trying to read a, read a badge and, and, and gauge, you know, what context they're talking to you about. Mm. But, you know, the event in November was probably the, 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 the first time I've had almost this constant stream of people wanting to say it's amazing, it's, it's going really well and so on. So, you know, we will, you know, there were a few tweaked changes to, to the event last year and, and we'll, we continue to do that. So, you know, we don't kind of uh, have revolution with the, the conference. We have that evolution with the conference. I think there's, you know, there's a huge number of events again this year you know, in terms of we've we've reignited that vibrant um, SIG community, we are keeping our virtual events as well. So we we now you know provide for both both populations of people that you know something that can be an hour or three quarters of an hour. You know, let's put that into a webinar um, or you know a, a short virtual event. Um, but also you know in terms of I, I guess Craig. You can probably tell me the dates, but we've got the you know the range, the full range of symposiums again this year. Yes, we have. So uh, coming up in June, we have the Journey to West Four Hanna in Belfast, and we have a BT symposium that will be in Manchester in July. So again, it, it back to that bringing everything to our community and taking things around the UK and Ireland uh, for our members to attend, and just back to connect. The, the, the feedback was phenomenal it, it, it was brilliant again still learning points there's always learning points we you know what we focus on is you know okay what can be improved mm -hmm. uh, perhaps me not being accosted by a drag queen at Sugfest might might be one area of improvement <laughs> but <With cameras laughs> it around. would be remiss <laughs> if, I, if I didn't mention that but no looking looking forward to this year you know plans already ongoing uh, it, it uh, end of November again 26th of the 28th and you know we, we've already got uh, around about I think 150 delegates registered already and I think more than half of the exhibition uh, space has been sold so everybody's looking forward to it we, we're looking to uh, release the streams in in May uh, and then once that's done we'll start you know having a call for speakers and building the program over the summer uh, to, to really release that program as, as we get to to autumn uh, before the event but yeah uh, kind of similar format as such we we did make some tweaks as paul said last year you know we had a keynote on the sunday evening which which went down well mm. uh we'll be looking to repeat that uh and uh you know again that we we brought in what we call the exhibitor focus on the monday which gave more people back in the exhibition hall yep. and that seemed to work really well as well it very well uh so you know the things that you know we we We've changed, we'll keep, maybe the odd thing that, that might be changed again, but not a great deal, as Paul said. You know, we want to evolve it as we go forward and make it better. And so there's all of that. And then the, the other value you add from a membership perspective is, you know, white papers. So at the start of this year, you know, there's two white papers around, you know, support for the public sector. We've got a very, um, as a, as a non-public sector person, a very uh, challenging and interesting uh, mm. procurement process that they they have to go through. So we've we've done some work with uh, Cheryl, uh, supported that who's uh, who's on the board of the user group and, and works for uh, you know in the public sector. So that's that's an important area in you know in terms of you know and SAP are trying to drive their their success in that space. So we we've done a white paper to help in that area. Our members. And also certifications. So one of the things that we've been challenging SAP and the partner community about is making sure that the partner community have the right skills to deliver projects. Um, and one of the things that we thought actually, you know, sometimes you need to understand what skills you require from your partner, what certifications should those partners have, and so on. So you know, there's a white paper coming out on that. 
and um, I don't think we're revealing yet, but there will be one later on in the year as we go what, through what the kind of the back end of the year white paper looks like as well. Excellent, Paul. Everyone loves a teaser, so uh, we'll, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait with bated breath. Now, one of the things that I picked up on the Connect conference was the the rapport uh, and the relationship that had been built between the user group and uh, SAP. We came on stage, and not long after. Uh, connect if my memory serves me right it was announced that he was obviously leaving as the uk md so uh, what are your hopes uh for working with sap's uk new md i think for me firstly i'd like to say thank you to mckeel he's been a really strong advocate mm. for the, the user group community um during his tenure um he's brought members to us he suggested speakers for the conference He's helped facilitate things like that. It, it's, you know, the, our relationship with MDs always feels quite short. Um, you, you know, there's, there's, there's been a few, even just during my tenure as chair. I don't think it's down to me that they, they all depart. They do seem to go on to, to other things. <laughs> I don't think um, but, so, Paul. Yeah. but I think one of the really nice things that shows kind of how the relationship between the user group and SAP has evolved is, you know, McKeel and Rowett did a call with us, you know, just as it was being announced or just just prior to it going public, really, mm. to talk to us about what was happening. And, and then and then when the, you know, the new MD was was being announced again, Rowett arranged that call. So I think that kind of shows that piece that, you know, things are, are, are working well between us. I think, you know, there is a recognition from SAP that there is a lot they can learn by engaging with the user community yeah. that will help them be successful. And I think, you know, there is more of a recognition that, you know, we are a critical friend. You know, we're not, we are independent of SAP. So we're not always going to, you know, be an extension of the marketing function almost of SAP, but we're there to grow that community in, in, in our space. And I think, you know, we're seeing increasingly that and Craig talked earlier on about the trust workshops and, you know, McKeel supported that. In terms of the new MD, again, we're not looking for revolution. We're looking to evolve that relationship and develop where, where we've got to with McKeel and, and some of the other managing directors in the past. And it is about that. There are things that we can do together. There are areas where, you know, we can give them feedback from, you know, our membership in terms of, you know, how we survey and, and, and so on, you know, journey to S4 and things like that. Yeah. So I think it's about continuing that that relationship and, and ensuring that, you know, it's a two way street and, you know, we can we can get the right support for the community and, and we can help SAP to be successful as much as uh, our members. Yeah, and I, th I think, uh, you know, I echo exactly what, what Paul said about our relationship with, with McKeel and, and, and thanks to him. And, you know, I, I was down in uh, Clockhouse for meetings a, a, a few weeks ago and, and, and sat down with Ryan. And I was really pleased with, you know, what, what I was hearing from, from Ryan on how he wants to continue that collaboration and uh, support and help and really focus on driving to, to make customers successful on, on their SAP journey. So, you know, really good, uh, you know, what, what we're hearing so far. Uh, certainly, I, I was down in uh, Clockhouse yesterday and it was vibrant. Mm. It, it's possibly the most vibrant I've seen Clockhouse since, well, pre pre-COVID yeah. uh, because it, it, it's often been resembling a bit of a ghost town when I've been down there uh, but there was lots of people in uh, seemed to be getting more and more people back into the office now and it, it had that vibrancy again of conversation through, throughout the building which was good. Well that's really good news and, and actually keeping on the SAP theme one thing I wanted to come back to is a question I asked in fact last year uh, and that is, have you seen anything in SAP's plans that particularly excite you for the next year? One thing I've seen recently, I think, is, you know, we, we've talked quite a lot. And, and I was, when, when we uh, do research with our members, that the importance of data 
and uh, the importance of data on the customer's journey with, with SAP or, or on any solution. And obviously, uh, the SAP's recent announcement of the SAP data sphere is quite interesting. And I won't say I know a whole lot about it at this point, but uh, you know, I'm hoping to, you know we'll see quite a bit more of it in our an analytics symposium in uh, April. But it, it will be interesting to see how that pans out and how that's helping customers on their journey to ensure that you know their their data and analytics are fit fit for the future as as they transform uh, to to the future. I think the other thing for me is we've got a sapphire in Europe at full scale, as it were, rather than, uh, you know, everyone having to uh, fly across the Atlantic for a, a big SAP customer centric rather than technical centric, clearly there's, you know, there's the, uh, the other, uh, the other event in the autumn. So I think that's, that's great to see that, you know, and, and how can we develop, you know, in that community and, and you know, it's another opportunity for us to meet members and, and, and attract new members to the user group. Absolutely. So that's uh, Barcelona in May. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So in closing, um, I really shouldn't be asking this question, really, because it should be painfully obvious from the conversation we've just had. But, you know, just to recap, you know, for anyone listening that isn't currently a member of the UKO SUG, why should they join? I'll, I'll start on that and then I'll let Craig, Craig conclude. I think for me, you know, as a, a member of, uh, you know, the community that is an SAP user, why would you not join a community that runs dozens of events every year that you can pick and choose whether you go to or you 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 know you go to face to face or you join virtually? You've got access to a vibrant community of skilled people who are like you, passionate about getting the best out of SAP in their organisation, and you know you can engage, you can influence what those events are what happens at those events, you know, we're always taking feedback on how we develop that community. So you've, you've kind of got that bit, you've got an amazing conference, you've got symposiums, you've got uh, white papers. Um, and, you know, why, why wouldn't you, I think is probably the, more, more the, uh, the, the piece, but I'll let that Craig conclude. Yeah, just I think just picking up on on certainly a word you used there, Paul, and that that that's passion, and mm -hmm. you know we we have a vibrant, passionate community of SAP customers, SAP partners, and SAP themselves. You know we bring the whole community together. You know it from a customer perspective, that education, the resources, the advocacy, the the ability to lean on other customers in in the community, I I think is is, is crucial and and valuable for the journey. And you know our ultimate aim, as I said right at the start, is to drive success for everyone in the SAP community. From a partner perspective, you know connecting partners with the right customers at the right time is is another big part of what we we aim to do, uh, so that the partners can help the customers on their journey again to success and from from sap you know our members are at, again back to that word passion passionate about sap and making it work for them and, and bettering it so providing that you know viewpoint to sap that kind of advocacy for their products but also their comments and uh, advice on how it can be changed to meet the customer needs again melt into that pot of of driving success but yeah like paul said why wouldn't you it's a silly question i know gentlemen well look finally i i just like to say thanks for allowing me to take the reins of sug talks for today and thank you both for being fantastic guests and and allowing me back frankly um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it valuable. And if you'd like further information on the user group, please visit sapusers.org or follow us on social media platforms. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for inviting me back. And uh, until next time, thank you. Thank you.